Hello everybody and welcome back. I'm standing here in front of my 2019 Tesla Model 3 dual motor long range, about to start a 70 mile an hour highway range test. I'll be taking this down to the New Jersey Turnpike now, stopping at a supercharger, filling back up to 100%, getting back onto the highway, driving in a loop up and down the New Jersey Turnpike until she won't go any further. Now this car is EPA range rated at 310 miles per charge. That doesn't mean that I'll be able to get that at 70 miles an hour. In fact, I won't be able to. The EPA range rating is a mixture of city and highway driving, so you would very rarely ever be able to match the full EPA range rating while you're driving at highway speeds. But in any event, Teslas are notoriously efficient, so we're probably going to get closer than most other EVs do. I'm guessing somewhere around 280, 285 miles, but we're going to soon find out. I'll check back when we're about 50% of the way, just to give a little bit of an update, and uh, then we'll sum things up at the end. But for now, if you like watching my videos on electric car range, electric car charging, basically anything electric car, don't forget to click the subscribe button at the bottom of the video. Thanks. All right. So since I'm doing this range test in my Model 3, I want to make sure that I'm fair to the car. And I'm going to put my aero wheel covers back on. Now, these haven't been on the car since I took delivery, to be honest with you. I really don't like them. I know some people do. Uh, that's fine. That's personal preference. But um, I actually had a home delivery of my Model 3, and I didn't let the Tesla representative leave until he took these off, or at least showed me how to take them off. So um, putting them back on so we get uh, a fair range test. Uh, one thing I have to do before I put them back on is remove the center caps from the wheel. Now, they don't come with the car. Center caps that come with the wheel covers can't be used as the center caps on the wheel. You have to order this kit from Tesla, which I did. It also includes these lug nut plastic covers to make it look nice because they're kind of ugly. They're hidden behind the aero cap, so if you don't take it off, you don't see it. But once you take it off, you want them to look a little bit nicer. So Tesla sells you this kit um, with the um, center caps and these lug nut covers, which I bought and put on. But I'm doing a little quick demonstration here to uh, show how I take the center caps out of the wheel. It's not an easy test. You can't pry them out with a screwdriver. You'll damage them. So one of the things that I do and what many people do is get some tape and really good sticky tape like this. Stick it to the, the center cap. Make sure to press it against it really nice and tight. And let's see if it works on the first time. Sometimes you got to pull it a couple times. But once you get a good connection and you also have to pull it straight out, there it comes. The center cap will come out and undamaged and fine for you to use again. So you need to take that out before you put the aero covers back on. And I'll show you how easy they are to put back on. First of all, you find your air valve and you, there's an opening in the cap that kind of guides you. You use that to put it on and then that's it. The aero covers are back on and I'm ready to take off and see just how far uh, 2019 Tesla Model 3 all-wheel drive long range goes at a constant 70 miles an hour. All right, I've just fully charged my Tesla Model 3 dual motor long range. It's a 2019 model and I'm going to be conducting a constant 70 mile an hour range test. We're fully charged up here. I'm on the New Jersey Turnpike. I'm about to begin driving north and south on the Turnpike in a loop. I do the same route when I do all the range tests so it kind of negates any uh, elevation change and if there's any wind in any one direction, which there is today, we have a slight wind, eight to nine miles an hour coming from the northwest. So as we're traveling down the turnpike, we're going to have a little bit of a tailwind and then when we turn around and head back up, it's going to be a little bit of a headwind. It's not much. Eight, nine miles an hour isn't enough to make that much of a difference. Uh, in any event, we're heading out now to begin. 
in this. The tires are all been tested. They're at the factory recommended 42 pounds per square inch. I'm going to be putting the car in chill mode. Uh, that really doesn't matter because I'm going to be driving most of the time at on autopilot at 70 miles an hour. So the driving mode shouldn't make that much of a difference. Um, it's a beautiful day. Great range weather. 76 degrees. I have the uh, aero caps on the vehicle. I usually don't drive with them on, but uh, for this test, I think it was fair to put them on to get the proper range that the vehicle can get. Now, this vehicle was rated at 310 miles per charge when it was new. I've had it exactly a year today. I know that because when I got in the car today, there was a message on my screen saying that my premium connectivity expired. I needed to log into my Tesla account and pay the $9.99 per month now for premium connectivity, which I did. I think it's worth it. So uh, I, I happily paid for that. But that reminded me that today was exactly a one year anniversary for my Tesla Model 3. Uh, I've taken care of this car. I've taken care of the battery. Uh, I have about 15,000 miles on it. And this is only the fourth time that I've charged it to 100%. And each time I charged it to 100%, I didn't let the car sit. I immediately get in the car and go driving for it. That's one of the things that is not great for you to do. If you do on occasion charge your car to 100%, don't let it sit at 100% for hours after you do that. That's not good for the battery. If you do need to charge to 100% for a long trip, try to time your charging so that you finish up pretty close to when you're going to leave on your journey, which we're about to do right now. Uh, we'll check in when we're about 50% uh, of the way, see how we're going. I'm going to guess that we're going to finish up somewhere around 280, 285. I think we're going to do a little less than the EPA rated range, but we'll see. I've been wrong before on my predictions on range tests, and I probably will be wrong again. again. So, just past the 50% mark, and we were actually at 145 miles, so that comes out to about 290 miles, a little better than I was predicting, not quite the EPA range rating, but we don't expect that with a 70 mile an hour consistent drive. It's actually outstanding as far as I'm concerned. We're averaging 231 watt hours per mile, which again, for 70 miles an hour, that is just crazy efficiency numbers. It's part of Tesla's secret sauce, part of why they're just you know, what makes a Tesla just better than most of the other electric cars on the market today. Take a little bit look at the energy consumption. As you can see here, there's a little bit of ups and downs on the graph. I'm not sure you can see that there. That's because we, I don't have a perfectly flat uh, uh, roadway that I'm driving on. I'm on the New Jersey Turnpike. We probably have a, a hundred foot uh, rise and drop as I'm driving, not too much. Um, but enough to make little uh, changes in the efficiency. Uh, still, at uh, 232 now watt hours per mile, that's just great efficiency. Uh, and we should end up with a little bit less than 300 miles of range. We're at 78 degrees now, temperature ticked up a little bit. I have the air conditioning on at 70 degrees and at the second fan setting, so I'm trying to stay cool, but also not uh, use up too much energy that will affect the, uh, the range. Uh, as I pass the 50% uh, mark, I was at 33 kilowatt hours used. It's a little less than what I would expect. That would be indicating that I only have 66 kilowatt hours of usable energy in this battery. I should have over 70. So let's see in the second half of the trip if that kind of works its way out. Uh, the Tesla Model 3 Long Range has, I think it's a 78 kilowatt hour total usable battery pack. Uh, and uh, of that, uh, you know, uh, not usable total, of that I should, even though the car is a year old, I should have over 70 kilowatt hours usable if I run it down to zero. So we'll have to keep an eye on that towards the end of the trip. But for now, everything's going smoothly. Roadway is pretty clear, as you can see. There's not a lot of activity here on the New Jersey Turnpike during COVID uh, stay-at-home orders. So uh, that really isn't much.
much of a problem. We're approaching the end of the New Jersey Turnpike. I'm only a couple miles from Delaware now. I'm going to turn around and head back up the turnpike. The wind is going to change a little bit at that point. I should have more of a headwind, but I also noticed that the wind has died down. It's only about five or six miles an hour now, which isn't uh, really much at all. It affects the range, but uh, five or six miles an hour isn't going to really make that big of a difference. In any event, that's why I make the circular laps up and down the turnpike to try to negate as best I can the change in um, elevation and also the wind uh, which typically is blowing from the same direction check back with you uh, towards the end probably right before we finish up to see how we're doing and uh, hopefully I'm getting close to 300 miles see that we're back we are 267 miles into the trip we have 7% state of charge left and we are about 18 miles from the Tesla supercharger station in Maple Shade, New Jersey. Happens to be the only open 250 kilowatt Tesla supercharger in New Jersey. We have a few more coming, but they haven't opened yet. So uh, I'm going to try to do some charging tests, uh, timing tests also, uh, which won't be part of this video. You'll have to watch the next one to see that. But uh, so we're now at 268 miles in. We're averaging 235 watt hours per mile. We've used 63 kilowatt hours of electricity and we have a projected range of 23 miles left which should bring us right about to 291 miles of range uh, pretty consistent with what it was telling us earlier um, I'll be happy with that nearly two nearly 300 miles at a constant 70 miles an hour is pretty fantastic I'm gonna pan down a little bit to the screen now and maybe you can see that I'm not sure you can see here my consumption it's telling us we have 22 miles of range remaining if you go to the trip meter you can see here that it's telling me I'm going to arrive at the supercharger at 2% state of charge if that happens the supercharger is on a main road I'll drive up and down a little bit I won't be going 70 miles an hour but I'll be going as close to 70 as I legally can there to see just how far we can go before we hit zero on battery which is the ultimate goal to roll into the supercharger while we're on zero uh, temperature now is 81 degrees it's gotten warmer uh, the wind has died down a little bit more we're only at around five mile an hour uh, wind right now which really isn't bad at all uh, and looks like we're gonna be uh, rolling in soon and uh, I think we're gonna come in at right about 290 which as I said before is just amazing uh, to put it in perspective uh, we've used 63 kilowatt hours of the battery right now. I did the Chevy Bolt range test on the same exact course uh, about uh, three weeks ago, and I used 63 kilowatt hours of energy and was able to drive 200 and I believe it was 219 miles, might have been 220 miles of range. So uh, using the same amount of energy, the Model 3 has gone 50 miles further than the Bolt did. And the Model 3 is a bigger, heavier car, uh, some would say more luxurious. It's much more powerful and faster. It has a lot more going for it than the Bolt, yet in the same amount of energy, it goes so much further. It's just part of, uh, you know, Tesla really has this efficiency thing nailed. That's one of the things that they do just so much better than any of the other uh, electric vehicle manufacturers. So. Uh, we'll jump back again when we're done and do the wrap up all right all finished up and back home how good we do well i pulled into the supercharger station in maple shade new jersey just as the battery went to zero now i'm sure i could have went another mile or two but it was at zero when i plugged in and that was 289.1 miles later Fantastic range for the Model 3, dual motor, long range. It's EPA rated at 310 miles. At a constant 70 miles an hour, I got like 93% of the EPA rated range, which is fantastic. Now the last two cars I did this 70 miles an hour range, uh, range rating on were the 
2020 Chevy Bolt EV and the 2020 Nissan Leaf Plus. Now both of those cars averaged 3.4 miles per kilowatt hour during the trip. The Model 3 averaged 4.25 kilowatt hours during the same course. Now this is a bigger car, it's heavier, it's much more powerful. It's about 200 pounds heavier than the Leaf Plus, it's about 500 pounds heavier than the Bolt EV, yet it still was able to be 25% um, more efficient than those two other EVs. It's part of why Tesla is so successful. Yes, they make these cars that look great, they're fast, they're fun to drive, but also they're fantastic electric vehicles. Tesla has something in their electronics. I mean, it's all they focus on is efficiency and performance and they hit their targets. It's a fantastically efficient car. It's one of the reasons why I bought one. Uh, I'm lucky, I get the opportunity to drive all of these electric cars on the market. I wish everybody had that opportunity, but being a writer for Inside EVs, I get these media loans, I get to drive everything. And this is what's in my garage now uh, for a reason. It really is a fantastic car. It's fun to drive, super fast, and the range is incredible. Again, at 70 miles an hour, I averaged 4.25 miles per kilowatt hour. I haven't had any other EVs that I've ever driven that was a, that efficient at that high of a speed. So, um, you know, uh, it's the longest range that we've tested so far of any EV on the 70 mile an hour range test. I'm hoping to get into an Xpeng P7 later this year and that is supposed to have a slightly longer range at least while it was rated in China. I'll be super interested to see if I can beat the 290 miles with that um, but we'll have to wait a little while before that happens but for now right now the Tesla Model 3 is the range king on the Inside EV's range test so far. We haven't done uh, the 100 kilowatt hour Model S yet. We're planning on doing that. That's probably going to beat it but for now the Model 3 is the range king and uh, I tell you I just continue to be impressed by this car the longer that I have it uh, it's, it's an incredible car it's so much fun to drive and the efficiency is just amazing now you know I'm critical of, of, of Tesla in a lot of our, our reviews uh, I might criticize them for their paint and certain uh, body panel gaps or whatnot, uh, certain manufacturing things, but we do that just to, you know, tell the whole story. Tesla doesn't do everything perfectly, but they still do build the best electric vehicles. In my opinion, they are the, the, the fastest, the most fun to drive, and the most efficient. And this range test proved it. The Model 3 long range dual motor is an incredibly efficient vehicle, and uh, Anybody who uh, has any concerns about the highway range, that the faster you go, the l less your range is, which is the case. This car here is blows anything away that I've driven as far as highway efficiency. And uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, we'll see you next time.